Hello and welcome to Bellwoods Bakery, the only place that challenges you to combine your love of video games with an uncomfortably high number of calories so that you too can achieve a peak gamer body. In today's episode, we're going to be covering what it means to make a poffin, the Pokeblock equivalent in Generation 4 that transformed the beautiful Feebas into the gorgeous and elegant Milotic. But what other purposes did this tasty treats have in these games? Let's get into it. After arriving in Hardhome City and speaking to this recurring character with an unnatural love for Pokemon, the player is given the Poffin case. It's cute, lovely, smart, plus amazing. You think so? Oh yes, it stunning, kindly, love it. Hug it when sleeping, warm and cuddly, spectacular, ravishing. Oh, look at the time. So what is a Poffin? Introduced in Generation 4, the Poffin is a food item that makes a Pokemon tougher cuter, smarter, cooler, and more beautiful, to the point you would think that Daft Punk inspired it. Every Pokemon in the game has a specific value in these categories, and yes, even Magikarp has a value for toughness. Once the Poffin is consumed, it can raise one, two, or even five of these stats. Poffins are made using the various berries that can be collected around the Hoenn region. Each berry provides one of five flavors, either spicy, dry, sweet, bitter, or sour. Because I don't live in Hoenn, but in America, I thought it would be a good idea to use the most common and native berry we have here. Nice and ripe. Since chocolate has a naturally bitter taste, you can bet that I'm going to be feeling a bit more clever after eating these goodies. Now, to the making of a poffin in the games. After throwing in your desired berries, you are required to play an extremely engaging minigame of how quickly can I ruin my DS bottom screen. After the process is complete, you're left with a single poffin which can be fed to any of your Pokemon. Side note. While doing research for this video, I learned that the number of poffins you make is directly related to the number of players making them. So, two players makes two poffins, three players makes three poffins, and four players makes four poffins, of course. So now, Nintendo is actively punishing me for not having any friends. Anyway, back to the video! As stated earlier, these Poffins are then fed to any of the player's Pokemon so that a specific value is raised. You can raise the Pokemon's value in Tough, Beautiful, or even Smart, though this value was changed in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire to Cleverness. Raising these values plays a role in the visual competition of the Pokemon contests in Sinnoh. But everyone knows that there was only ever one reason to make these things. That's right, the beauty stat was tied to one of the most frail and underwhelming Pokemon ever conceived. A Pokemon with a face that only a mother could love. That Pokemon is, of course... No amount of beauty is ever gonna make this thing attractive. While there are several factors that go into the effectiveness of a Poffin, the points aren't important, just like the show whose line is it anyways. Instead, let's try to make a real-world equivalent of the pastry. While I couldn't find any images suggesting what the Poffin is based off, images show it as a football-shaped pastry that comes in a variety of colors and is accented with different colored toppings. There are five different colors, each of which is directly correlated with the attribute it raises. For my Poffin, I chose to ignore this almost entirely and instead make a scone. Why a scone, you may ask? Well, for one, I've never made a scone before and I enjoy making different pastries. And for two, I thought it would be a nice recipe to complement the berries we picked earlier. To make these scones, <clears throat> poffins, we're going to need the following. Two and one quarter cup flour, one third cup sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, 
one quarter teaspoon baking soda, one half teaspoon kosher salt, eight tablespoons of frozen unsalted butter, one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, one half cup of sour cream, one half cup of strong coffee, and one large, one large egg. With all your ingredients ready, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and set it aside to forget about, like some Pokemon. Using a medium bowl, mix your flour, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, and salt. Once it's combined, get a cheese grater and pull your butter out of the freezer. Use the large holes in the grater to cut the butter. Be careful though, because Butterfingers is a term used to describe more than just when you drop your phone on your face. All jokes aside, this step really can get your hands cut up, so take your time and be careful. After your butter has been combined with the flour mixture, stir in your chocolate chips. At least that's what you're supposed to do. I unfortunately was distracted by the TV and didn't read the recipe properly, so I skipped this step and moved straight into whisking together the sour cream, coffee, and egg. Once the mixture is ready, combine it with your dry ingredients. This part gets a bit tricky, so my recommendation is to pour about half of your wet ingredients into the dry because of how hard it becomes to work with the dough. Add the second half of the liquid mixture and continue to work with the dough. Your dough will likely get as sticky as mine, but keep working with it and add a bit of extra flour to make it a little bit more manageable. Cover a countertop with flour and place down the dough, flattening it out and forming a circle. Grab a knife and cut the dough like an 8 cut pizza. For anyone that doesn't like pizza, that means to cut it into 8 equal triangles from the center. Put your pastries on a cookie sheet and, after playing a game of Tetris, put them in the oven for about 20 minutes. Once they're done, pull them out and place them on a rack to cool down. Or, you can be like me and use a second cookie sheet that we turned upside down. And no, this has no benefit other than moving the poffins from the hot pan onto a cool one. To add a bit of flair to your poffins, we're going to make a simple glaze to spread on top. Using a quarter cup of coffee, one and a half cups of confectioner sugar, and two ounces of melted unsweetened chocolate, we're going to give these scones a look that even Brock himself would be proud of. Before you ask, yes, you can use semi-sweet chocolate for this section. It gives you that artery-clogging American flavor that everyone knows and loves. Combine your coffee and sugar together to form a paste and mix in the chocolate. Once combined, transfer your mixture into a Ziploc bag and cut the corner off, allowing a steady stream of glaze to flow out. Drizzle the glaze over your scones, adding as much or as little as you like. Once completed, you have your very own scone-inspired poffin, complete with the bitter taste of intelligence. So, I know what you're thinking. But Michael, what does it taste like? Well... Oh wow. That might be the best thing we've made on it. Oh, it's good. It tastes like it would go well with a pumpkin spice latte. And the texture is warm and fluffy, kind of like the Ugg boots my girlfriend just bought. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think she's ordering something else. What do you mean you spent $780 on avocados? Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel. Tell me in the comments what you thought of it. I put a lot more time into this one versus any of the other videos previously, so I'm hoping you did like it. Um, I stream on Twitch about five days a week. Um, links to that will also be in the description. And until next time, thanks for being here. I'll see you later.